All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our next installment of our Friends of HSF Alumni Speaker Series virtual Q&As. We're very excited to connect our alumni directly with our students to share insight on their specific topics. Today, we will hear from alumna Rima Nathan regarding getting more than a degree and participating in all FSU has to offer. Thank you to those of you who submitted questions ahead of time. If you submitted a question today and it goes unanswered, please feel free to submit the question via the chat feature. If time allows, we'll be submitting these questions to Rima live. Our student moderator for today is Ashley Rosado. Ashley is a fourth year student from Kissimmee, Florida, majoring in social entrepreneurship and creative writing. Ashley is involved with the Pride Student Union, SGA, undergraduate research, and the Multicultural Greek Council. Thank you for being here, Ashley. I'd now like to introduce our guest for this afternoon, Rima Nathan. Rima is currently a staff attorney at the Florida Supreme Court. As an undergrad at FSU, Rima participated in the Flying High Circus, the Social Science Scholars Program, the Research Intensive Bachelor's Certificate, the Center for Global Engagement, the World Affairs Program, the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program, and many other opportunities that FSU has to offer. This engagement helped her with law school applications and also laid the groundwork for her continued participation in various activities throughout law school, including involvement with Moot Court, Law Review, and the Public Interest Law Center. Thank you for being here, Rima. I'm now gonna hand it over to Jessica. Thank you, Amy, and welcome, Rima. Before we get started, participants, please know that you can submit a question in the chat to our host. Feel free to ask any questions there and we'll do our best to get to them. I'd like to start by just asking you, Rima, to share a little bit about your journey at FSU and how you became involved with so many different programs. Yeah, um, so hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, I, so I started as a freshman at FSU in the fall of 2012 and then went straight into law school when I graduated in 2016 at FSU as well. Um, I became involved in a lot, um, just it was a slow progress. Um, my freshman year I did XYZ activities and then those kind of branched out to meeting new people um, and new professors and stuff like that. Um, and I just found some things that I really liked and some things that I thought were cool, but I maybe didn't want to spend another year doing them and then continually kept branching out um, until my senior year. It all culminated into what <laughs> became um, my senior year. So yeah, just by continuously meeting new people and being open to the opportunities that kept knocking at the door. Thank you for sharing. Um, so what major and academic track did you follow to get to where you are today? And if you would recommend an alternative way or an alternative major, that would also be really interesting to hear about. Yeah, so, um, so most of what I'll talk about today is specific to social science majors. Um, I, I, I'll try to bring, I mean, there are lessons in all of it, but I majored in, um, I double majored in international affairs and political science for most of undergrad and then my senior year, I didn't want to graduate yet. Um, so I picked up a minor in French too to stay all four years, which, um, which I recommend doing because um, it just, if, if you can stay and learn more then why not? Um, it was really interesting and picking up a language is really useful. Um, I really enjoyed political science and international affairs. I kind of knew that I wanted to do that in high school before entering um, FSU. So I, I was just inter interested in politics and, and global issues and stuff like that. So um, that was in line, pretty well in line with my interests. Um, and then I kind of had an idea that I wanted to go to law school um, from the beginning of undergrad, but it kind of solidified each year more and more. Um, I don't think everybody says this, you don't have to, there's no major that you have to have to go to law school. Um, political science and international affairs or anything social science related is certainly helpful, but um, it's, it's interesting because in undergrad, you, there's, you can be on like a pre-law track and your goal is I'm studying this, but I want to go to law school. And then once you get to law school, it kind of branches back out again. It's like you're in law school, but what kind of law do you want to practice? What are you interested in? Because it's so broad. Um, and so I would recommend picking a major, no matter what it is, just pick a major that you're interested in, because once you get to law school, you can't 
you're not really like majoring in law. You're going to major in the kind of law that's interesting to you. And if your undergraduate degree reflects that, then you'll already kind of have a leg up on what you're interested in, what you want to become involved in. Like there's tax law and there's international law and there's like all kinds of things out there. Um, and so my background in in political science, but also in, in in international affairs kind of led me to take more classes in law school that were uh, surrounded by international law or a lot. Of, I did a lot of um, I got really interested in children's law and the criminal justice system and stuff like that. And my background in political science definitely helped me just kind of understand what was going on from from the beginning. when I entered law school, kind of understand that field better. Um, so I would definitely recommend something like that, but just something that you're interested in. It can be anything. Um, there was one person when I was a freshman, somebody told me to take intro to philosophy if you want to go to law school. Um, and I did do that. And I do recommend that if there's like one class you are going to take, um, just because that opens you up to kind of the, the kind of logical thinking that is on the LSAT. And so it's useful for that. But, um, but just finding something that's interesting to you is more important than, than anything else. So. Yeah. Thank you for the tip. I never heard that about the philosophy class, so yeah. that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. um, so our next question is, um, while at an FSU FBI job shadow event, an FSU alumni stated that when participating in extracurriculars, many students go a mile wide, but only an inch deep, and she recommended that we go an inch wide while going a mile deep. Do you stand by this recommendation? And if so, what would you say is a good number of organizations to be involved in? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I would say yes and no. Um, it really depends. Um, I definitely, I think I, I get where that comment is coming from because I, I don't think it's a good idea to be involved in like 10 different clubs and just be a participant and not be like, a board member or active in it in some way. If you're going to be involved in something, you should definitely dig a little deeper. Um, but at the same time, I think having a diverse resume is really important. And so say if you did SGA and just went all into SGA, like you probably, it probably was a really cool experience and really great. But if that's the only background that you have, I think it's more useful to have, you know, like two or three other things that kind of broaden your horizons a little bit. Um, so I would say a mix of both. Um, but it's also, I mean, it's, it's, up to the person too. Like I really liked being involved in a lot of different things. And the coolest part of it was by my junior and senior year, a lot of my friends that I had made um, in one club or the other started to, I started to see them again and it would come back and everybody would connect again. By the time you're at FSU for four years, it just kind of starts to blend together. And that was really cool and also useful because once you if you meet somebody in like in a second club who knows you from a prior experience, they're already going to have um, this idea of you as like a hard worker or a kind person or however you represented yourself in that other atmosphere. Um, and that's really, really useful just moving forward because your web of connections just continues to expand more and more. Um, so if I was going to put a number on it, I would say maybe be involved in at least like two or three different things. Um, but overall, I would say like pick a handful of things that seems diverse and then pick a subset of those things to really dive into and become like whether it's an executive board member or, or something like that on. Um, and a lot of things at FSU too, like some activities that I was in, like I was in the circus for my freshman year all through law school, actually. So I, that like I stayed with it the whole time. But there were other things I did that it was just like a year long commitment. Um, so there, there'll be a balance with that. If there's an opportunity to stick with something from say like your freshman year all through senior year and you can become more involved um, and just be a leader in that organization, if that's something that's important to you, I, am, I definitely recommend taking up the opportunity. But because there are so many opportunities at FSU, um, I be wary of staying committed to something that doesn't spark all of your interests because there's just there's so many things out there and if you're putting a lot of time into something that you think maybe these aren't like the maybe these aren't the things that I want to do or maybe these interests aren't like the most cool things to me um there's something else out there so go find the other thing too yeah yeah that's really good advice and I think it's a good balance between like um, internship based things, community mm -hmm. service, honor society. So it's just finding that sweet spot. Yeah. Um, but what would you suggest freshmen get involved in while attending Florida State? Yeah. So 
if you're a freshman and you're just getting here, um, I'm sure this will be a little different for fall. Um, I'm going to try to give you some advice on that too as much as I can um, with the virtual environment that we're in. But um, I think as a freshman, one of the most important things would be to just get involved in a group that's going to get you a really nice solid group of friends. Um, for me, that was the circus and the circus was my friend group for, throughout throughout my whole time at FSU. But um, but once I had a good solid friend group and I, that I knew and trusted, and I knew we're all like nice people and were interested in the same things as me, then um, like some of my friends in circus started branching into other interests with me. Um, and it was kind of, it was really cool just to kind of have like a home based social group to always come back to. Um, but so yeah, something where you just, you're going to have like a really solid group of like your FSU family that you're going to be able to, to trust and hang out with and feel safe with. Um, but another thing, so in the academic realm of things, um, well, although I think friend groups absolutely support your academic interests at FSU too. Um, one of the things that I think is really cool to get involved in early on is research. Um, and you can do that through, like I did that through the research intensive bachelor's certificate, which I started my sophomore year, I think, but I also did that through the undergraduate research opportunity program, which I'm pretty sure you can do as a freshman. Um, and that's really cool because, so coming into a program like you're up, um, as a freshman, you're, you're starting off and you're still like learning the, the ins and outs of research and stuff, but it gives you an opportunity to be paired with a professor who you might end up developing a really cool relationship with, who maybe by your senior year, that relationship's going to grow so much to the point where you're doing like really extensive groundbreaking research that you can then turn into a paper or turn into something that you're using for an application for grad school. Um, so I think in terms of like the, the benefit that you're going to get back, I think becoming involved in research early on as a freshman is just something that's really useful because each year of undergrad that, that interest can develop with you um, and it can branch out. You're never going to be stuck or constrained by the limits of research because there aren't really any. You're going to be able to grow with it as long as you're still putting forth energy and excitement. Um, that's something that can develop with you throughout undergrad, which I think is really useful. Um, so yeah, research, so, super good. <laughs> I definitely agree. My Europe mentor is like now my life mentor. So yeah. definitely get involved with that. Um, so our next question says, I'm an incoming freshman following the pre-law track. Are there any specific classes or activities that you think would be beneficial and relevant to what I want to do? So I know you answered it a little bit earlier, but mm -hmm. maybe expand on that. Yeah, so yeah, definitely that philosophy, like intro to philosophy, whatever um, the title of that course is, is a really good class to take. But also any um, reading or writing classes, like I actually, I didn't take a whole lot of writing or literature classes um, through my political science major, but that is something that I maybe would have done more of, like looking back on it, because towards the end I took, like I took a French writing class at one point in the global literature class and those were both just so cool and so interesting and it forced you to write which for law school is just so great like even if you're writing badly it's just like just the process of putting words to paper and like forcing yourself to articulate thoughts um is just such a good practice and it's really one of those things where the more you do it the better you're gonna get at it even if you feel like you're not very good at, it at the beginning um so any class that really just like forces you to practice those reading and writing skills would be really useful in the long term. Um, another thing is the World Affairs Program, which is so it's called World Affairs Program or WAP for short, but it's FSU's version of Model United Nations. Um, and that is something that I became involved in as a freshman. And I remember walking, I was still kind of trying to figure out where I wanted to get involved and who I wanted my friends to be and stuff like that. And I remember walking into a Model UN meeting and I was just like wow these are my people like they think like I do and we and all of them were going to law school so then I was like well I guess that's probably what I want to do then <laughs> so a lot of them served as mentors and people to bounce questions off of but um but yeah because so model UN if you aren't familiar with it um tons of debate skills and stuff like that and just critical thinking skills um so even though that was model UN is like global scale um stuff it's really applicable applicable to to law school just in terms of defending your points and, and analyzing other sides and then maybe being forced to pick up the other side's argument and, and navigate that. Um, once you're in law school, the closest thing to that is moot court 
and mock trial. I didn't do mock trial, but I did moot court, um, which is the appellate version of um, like mock trials, trials and moot court is the appellate version of oral arguments and stuff like that. Um, and that was one of my favorite things that I did at FSU Law too. So that's the, any activity that really gets you engaged speaking, um, defending arguments, stuff like that. I recommend World Affairs Program. A lot of my friends also did SGA and stuff like that. And I think that would probably be a good background to have. But um, but yeah, all those things. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so how do you know where to start? How did you know where to start with the process of getting involved at FSU? How were you able to do all of the activities that you were involved with? Um, so one of the things that was really useful, I lived on the dorms. I lived in Landis my first year um, and I had a really good RA who just like, he would always post things everywhere about like anything to get involved in. Um, and there's stuff out, like there's so much stuff out there. Like if you're just social media and even just like on campus posters and flyers, they're just, there's everything there. Um, and just like pick one or like one to five of them and just like go, go find out about it when, so virtually, I know this is going to be really different, but um, anything that you're interested in FSU, just start following them on social media, like the circus on social media, follow the circus on social media, follow um, this, the office of national fellowships, um, because that's going to be this, that's going to be where you get all the information and where all the opportunities are um, to see how you can get involved. Um, so I highly recommend doing that. But yeah, I just, it was mostly just like trial and error. Like I would find things and go hang out and maybe make a bunch of friends um, or meet a really cool professor or find a, a project topic that was, I just thought was like super interesting. Um, or other ones I'd be like, oh, that was cool, but you know, I'm gonna do something else next week. Um, so a lot of trial and error. And as a freshman, you have the freedom to do that um, before you start getting bogged down and by the commitments that you're going to be making throughout your freshman year. Once you've already committed to things, um, it gets a little harder, but do a lot of trial and error as a freshman. There's lots of opportunities. You never know unless you try. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the next question is, as someone looking to build a career in law, what are the steps, clubs, programs, or any other resources that a student can do to pursue this? Yeah, so... We talked about a few of them. So reading and writing, um, philosophy, the world affairs program. Um, I'm going to pinpoint research again one more time. Um, so when I did, I did RIBC, I did a project on um, like political violence and wartime, basically. Um, it was, it was a, a, a really broad topic, but, um, but it's not necessarily stuff related to law, right? Um, but I was able to develop this whole project and thesis um, about um, what was going on. And then I had to defend that basically. And that um, just gave me a lot of confidence going into law school, knowing just knowing how to be confident in these ideas that I had formulated and come up with. Um, and in law school, you just instantly get to wrong like all the time. Um, and research is kind of a really good primer for that because there's a lot of trying stuff out and then figure, being like, oh, that doesn't really work or thinking you have a good answer and being like, oh, well, I didn't consider this other thing. Um, and that can, that can feel like heavy sometimes at the beginning, but just learning that that's part of the research process and you actually succeed even more once you figured out why you failed um, is, is really useful to the research process. Um, going through that and just learning how that's, uh, not a barrier, but an opportunity for even more growth is really um, really useful going into law school because it's, in my opinion, it's the same thing. You're, you're getting, you're arguing with people and you're debating topics and you're probably going to be wrong a lot of the time. But when you find out that you're wrong, that's an opportunity to, to further develop um, what's going on in your brain. So that was really useful. Um, yeah. So I didn't do research in law school, but the, the research interests that I had in undergrad stayed with me. And then towards, like, I'm still interested in research. So like, I'm done with law school now and I'm working, but like, I am not at the end of my research road. And now I'm like thinking about applying to PhD programs to do that. So it stays with you. Um, and it's just, it, it introduces you to critical thinking that your, your brain's never gonna be the same after you do this, so which is really important. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so how are you able to find a balance between um, your academics and your extracurriculars? And do you have any tips on balancing those two? Yeah, um, so that's really difficult. Um, yeah, you need a lot of time. <laughs> I wish all of us had more time um, in school. Um, yeah, I just, 
I think, especially by my junior and senior year, I just had to really consciously make decisions about what was worth my time and what wasn't worth my time, whether that was academic or extracurricular or friendships or social activities. I just had to be really aware of how valuable my time was and where I was putting it. Um, so, so like I said, as a freshman, you're not, you're not under any of the commitments that you've made yet. So go out and try a bunch of things and do everything because that's your time to just like spread your wings wide and see what comes back. Um, but once you start making commitments and get into things, um, it's really important to, to keep in the back of your head what your end goal is um, in undergrad and what kind of things, what kind of things you want to make sure that you get once you've, you're, you've left FSU um, and continuous to continuously reanalyze how that's working out with what you're, what you're involved in. Um, and that just having that in the back of my mind all the time helped me um, navigate just balancing all of those things. And it's really hard to balance them because there's not enough time in the day, um, but you could, you just have to do the most that you can with the time that you do have um, and it ends up working out. And that's another thing, the things that I got involved with, um, it, there was always a really amazing support group. So like in the circus, I had my friends and the coaches are always like incredibly supportive um, and would understand that if I had like a project to do or if I had some like really cool conference that I was going to, um, that they're not gonna make my life harder by having to like leave for that. So, and the same thing like with the research I was doing with professors, like if I had a circus show, they would understand. I'm not trying to get out of doing research. I have another thing to do. So, um, and that's honestly the case with everybody I've met at FSU, I doubt that you're going to find anybody in Tallahassee or at FSU that isn't supportive like that if you're showing interest in something. But, um, but just be like, don't be afraid to like reach out to the people around you, whether that's like your family or your friends or professors that you've made a good connection with or your teammates or something like that. Um, because everybody is stressed out um, and, and is probably going to be understanding of you having to balance so much. So especially everything that you're going to have to be balancing in the fall best of luck to you um, with the virtual world, but it's going to be, I, FSU is a good family, so they're going to be people to help you out, so just reach out. Definitely agree. Um, so this one's a little more specific. Um, when you were at FSU, did you ever intern anywhere, and if yes, where did you intern? Was it a law firm or something else, and did it solidify your interest in going to law school? Mm -hmm. So I never interned at a law firm or a law related thing. I had several friends in law school who the summer before, the summer in between, if you went straight through from undergrad to law school, interned at a law firm. Um, and I wouldn't even necessarily say, I don't know if that was, they would probably say it was useful, it was probably slightly useful. But again, going back to something I said at the beginning, I think the most important thing is just to intern somewhere that's interesting to you with a group of people that's interesting to you and develop interests and a resume that will make you unique. Like, so more than just being like, oh, I want to go to law school, so I'm going to go work at a law firm. Um, make it your own experience um, because that's going to be more interesting on a resume than just a cookie cutter um, legal internship. So, but I did not do a legal internship. Inter I did a internship at the Center for Global Engagement um, and I did that the last semester of my senior year, which was kind of cool because it was kind of like the culmination of everything that I had been doing. And then it was like my last internship. Um, and I was, so I was at the Center for Global Engagement and I was in charge of this program where we would work with the international students at FSU and put on events in the community and just have this dialogue about um, all countries that international students came from and Tallahassee and how we were similar and different and all of these things. Um, so that was really fun. Um, not related to law at all, but definitely related to international affairs and political science. Um, so that was a really cool kind of capstone to my major um, for international affairs and political science. Um, at that, when I took that internship, I already knew I was going to law school. So I didn't feel like I needed an internship on my resume to get into law school. Um, at that point, I was just, I wanted something to finish off my degree with um, and to make it unique and kind of bring it all together. So if you have... I definitely recommend whatever um, major you end up picking, definitely do an internship at some point that can kind of give you real world application to what you're learning at school. Um, the Globe was definitely something like that for me. Um, I also did um, to tag the social science scholars program. If you are a social science major, this is definitely social science scholars program is something you want to apply to. Um, I think you apply 
the end of your junior year, I'm pretty sure it, there's information on it that's more accurate on the internet, but um, that was really cool. So that wasn't an internship, but they give you, um, you take a leadership course, which is really interesting. I had always kind of thought like, oh, leadership, whatever, that's just a buzzword. Um, and then <laughs> I took this leadership course and I learned so much. It was so interesting. I was so glad I took that. Um, but so they, they, you take a leadership course with this cohort of other students who are in the program and then they give you grant money to basically go off and do a project and it can be anything that you want like you put together this project for yourself um, and some of the people in the cohort with me did do internships some people used it like one of my friends used the money to go to learn arabic um, because she just wanted to become fluent in arabic and another friend went and made like a documentary movie um, there's like you could do anything but i used it to go to there's this program at the middlebury institute at monterey in california and it was called, it was a peace building program so they talked about um like transformative justice and reconciliation and stuff like that um so i used it to go participate in that program which was about a month long and it was kind of like like an internship in the sense that it was a like it was a sustained period of time and it was real world application of my degree to the world of peace building and conflict and reconciliation um so that was really it wasn't an internship but it was it was in the same sense kind of like a capstone project um, that would not have been possible if I hadn't applied to the social science scholars program because they gave you money to do it, which is very useful. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I definitely recommend doing stuff like that. And so along the lines of the social science scholars program, there's also, there's a bunch of different places at FSU where you can get grant money to go do a project like that, whether it's for your research um, or for an internship. Um, there's so many opportunities. It, all, a lot of them are available. The information on them is available through the Office of National Fellowships or the Honors Scholars and Fellows House. Um, there's and a lot of times people do these things in the summer, which is really useful. Um, there's also again, for, it's, talking of summer things, I did study abroad. Um, again, not an internship, but it was something that um, I used to apply my degree to to real world stuff. Um, I went to. Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, and we studied uh, U.S. political influence in um, in that region, mostly in the 90s and today. But um, that was really really cool. So again, it doesn't you don't okay. I recommend doing an internship, but not even just an internship. Just do something that's like a capstone project. Um, that's a real world application. If whether that's studying abroad or or an internship or whatever, or do both um, <laughs> if you can. But but yeah, I highly recommend that. But don't let going, wanting to go to law school preclude you from doing an internship that might seem more interesting. Just don't just like go work at a law firm because you want to make sure you go to law school. If you do something cool like studying abroad, your resume is going to look just as strong, I promise you. Mm -hmm. That's so true. And making the most out of your summer can like make or break your experience in college. Yeah. Um, so the next question is, did you stay consistent with your involvement, involvements consecutively consecutively throughout the years or did you hop around and leave or enter involvement as opportunities were presented to you yeah so i definitely hopped around um there were some things like the circus i stayed with my research interest i stayed with um and then there were some things there were clubs that i was involved in that maybe a leadership position opened up and then i analyzed the situation and I was like, actually, okay, I really do want this position. I think I can do X, Y, and Z with it and help in X, Y, and Z ways. Um, and, but once that happens, you kind of have to reshift all your other focuses. It's just part of the balance and the decision making. Um, because there are, I was involved in several group efforts in undergrad where people became involved and said, oh, I want this position. I'm going to take it on and then didn't give it a hundred percent or, you know, no, you didn't give it 90%. Maybe you don't always need to give every single, if you give every single thing 100%, you're going to get really tired, but you need to give everything at least the better bulk of your effort. Um, and that I think in the long run ends up making you look a little worse than if you just didn't sign on with the commitment. So when you do have opportunities present themselves, make sure that you do the sit back and reflect on what you want to do. Um, because if you make a decision where you end up feeling trapped or constrained by your commitments, then you're not going to be giving it the best effort. And then everybody around you is going to be kind of disappointed. And that's not, that's not what we want. We want everybody to be like having a fun time and, and helping each other out. So, um, 
So that being said, yeah, I definitely switched around. And as things shifted, I reanalyzed my commitments. And there were some things that I had to say no to, or I had to backtrack on and say, actually, I'm going to have to not participate in this anymore. But, um, but there aren't hard feelings when you do that, because everybody understands that everybody's really busy and that interests change. And you just have to make sure that you're always doing that, that calculation for yourself and like where you want to get to be by the time you graduate. Definitely. You can't spread yourself too thin, but if you do, you have to advocate for yourself and say no. Yeah. Um, so this was pretty fun. How did you get involved with the FSU circus and do you need any experience to be involved? Yeah, so I, I wasn't even that interested in the circus, I think, when I got to FSU. I just had um, an old friend who was a few years older than me and already at FSU and in the circus, and she was, I, w I was asking, I was like, how do I make friends? Like, where do I go? What do I do? And she was like, oh, you should try out for the circus. And I was like, ah, whatever, um, okay. And then, so it was just kind of on a whim. Um, but they, they do have, so they aren't sure what they're doing yet this year. Um, but usually they have an auditions process and there's two rounds of auditions and usually it happens right at the beginning of the year. And then if you make it through auditions, then you're in the circus. Um, we have Halloween shows typically, and the biggest show is at the end of the year in April. Um, so once you're in for the year and make it through auditions, like you're in the circus for the rest of the year and it's a year long commitment. Um, this year they are still, they're gonna do something. Um, they just aren't sure what they're going to do yet. They probably aren't going to have um, the Halloween um, activities and the fall activities, but hopefully by the end of the year, they're going to put something together, maybe with a reduced cast um, where they can still put on a show. So if you follow them on social media, you'll definitely get all the updates on that. But um, I, that was like one of my favorite things I was involved in in FSU. Um, and it was, I, I recommend, so talking about like diversity in your resume, um, have at least one fun thing on your resume, like the circus or like an intramural sport or something like that. Um, I find that, so in almost every interview I went to through undergrad, whether it's for an internship or in law school for internships or, or even the job that I have now, every single interview, they, the first question they asked about was my involvement in the circus. They didn't ask about my grades or my any any of the other things I did. Eventually, we got to that because that part is important. But the first question was the circus because it made my resume really unique. And I think that is just number one key in terms of making your resume interesting is you don't want to, there's so many cookie cutter people who get like really good grades, XYZ internship. Okay, cool. Good to go. Like there are so many resumes out there that look like that. Not to discredit the hard work that goes into making those resumes, but if you can make it unique and, and develop an interest of your own and seem like more of an individual person, that's going to make any interview way more interesting. Um, but it's also, you're going to stick in the, in the mind of the people who are interviewing you like, Oh, that was the person who like did karate or that was the person who likes water skiing or something like that. Um, so they're at FSU, like aside from the circus, which I highly recommend anybody can be in the circus. You don't need any strength requirements at all. Um, you, there's a circus, there's a bunch of IM sports, there's all kinds of clubs that are, that are just like, whether, what, you can also be like a social issue that you're interested in. There are clubs that maybe aren't um, fully like academic clubs, but it's like a social issue that you're interested in advocating for. Um, so maybe that overlaps sometimes, but it's just something, something that you spend your spare time doing that makes you a unique person is going to be the best thing for your resume, in my opinion. And the circus was definitely that for me. So yeah. I love that. Um, that's really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously, given everything happening with the pandemic, um, this person says that they will be taking classes from home this semester since they are all online. Do you have any advice on overcoming virtual challenges while still wanting to be involved? Yeah, so um, I, my heart goes out to all of you guys trying to figure this out, um, but you're going to do great. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Um, one, so we're all moving to this online platform. Um, it's not going to be typical, but I do think that, um, a lot of clubs and organizations are going to be struggling themselves to figure out how to navigate all of this. And as whether you're an incoming freshman or a current student, your voice on that topic is going to be really valuable and interesting because everybody's going to be constantly recalculating and analyzing how to make these online platforms as beneficial as can be. So in terms of just getting involved in clubs, like one of the clubs I was involved in with um, was Amnesty International. It was just like a student group. 
um, and we did things on campus, but for the most part, it's just a student group. Um, and so say if there's a club like that that you want to become involved with, go follow them on social media. There still is a president and executive board of that club somewhere. They're just virtual right now. Um, and as an incoming person or as somebody from the outside, just come in and say, hey, like, I have this idea about something we could do virtually. Um, and this, this, or this is something that might be useful to me as somebody who's taking all of my classes online. Um, because those opinions are going to be, they're going to want those opinions because everybody's going to be trying to navigate what to do here. So just um, <laughs> still showing commitment to get involved, even though you are taking virtual classes. And then another thing is office hours with professors. I don't totally know how that's going to work. Um, and I'm sure professors are very overwhelmed right now trying to figure out how they are going to convert to online classes too. But, um, but anytime that you express an interest to a professor, in my experience, they are never disappointed. They are always so excited to talk about interesting things. Um, and that's totally something you can still do virtually. And um, to talk about research again, like if you do something like the undergraduate research opportunity program, you can get paired with a professor. And there's all kinds of research you can do virtually that you don't need to be in person to do. So that's another thing, like a lot of projects and capstone projects, research projects are things you can totally do virtually. Um, so reaching out to stuff like that is, is useful, but follow everybody on social media and then you'll be in the clear. <laughs> Definitely from an undergraduate perspective and like being the president of an organization right now, follow them all on social media if you're interested, DM them. And there's a lot of like virtual events and opportunities. So you all will be great. Mm -hmm. um so do you have any advice on financial management and advice on how to go about getting textbooks yeah so um again this is specific to social science majors because i do know that my friends who were chemistry majors had way more expensive textbooks than i did um, so <laughs> there that is um dependent on your major um most i always bought used textbooks um, and sometimes I had friends in grades or in years above me who had taken the same classes that I, as I did. So I was able to, sometimes they'd be super nice and give them to me or um, get them for super cheap from them. But um, always just, there's, there's like maybe like a handful of different online resources to find the textbooks. So just compare prices and try to get the best deal that you can. <coughs> um, for financial management, I, most of, there were a few semesters when I worked during the semester um, but that was really hard to do depending on your involvement but most of the time i would treat my summer as kind of the time to make money and then come back to school with a padding so um it's it's rare it's pretty hard to get paid internships sometimes if you're lucky enough to get a paid internship that's super cool um but also can be tricky um especially if you want to do something you're interested in but uh i yeah, so depending, like I used my summer months to kind of, I was a beach lifeguard and I would go home and I'd like work, 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 and then come back to school and be like, okay, now I'm gonna go back into school mode. Um, that was my strategy. Um, it's different for everybody depending on what your financial situation is. But um, another key that my mom always told me is like, it's one thing to, to have enough money coming in to spend, but if you just don't spend as much, it's like making money sometimes. So really think about what you're spending your money on um, and just trying to save as much as you can. Um, and it's, it's, it's a tough time going through school, but um, really just being aware of where your money is going is sometimes just as important as where you're gonna be making money when you're an undergrad. Thank you. Um, so the last of the questions that were submitted beforehand is, um, within all of your experiences at FSU, which would you say helped you the most post-grad? Hmm. Um, I would say, in some ways, the circus, just because it, of the uniqueness of it again. And it's, it's, it's a really easy icebreaker and conversation starter. So in terms of making connections in the community that come back around to help me, um, the circus has definitely been something that's done that, but also <clears throat> um, in terms of just like critical thinking, I think just being involved in research was really useful because that taught me how to taught me how to think like a lawyer before I was in law school kind of, um, and that was really, really useful. And it also taught, it just gave me going through that process and watching myself um, accomplish a project that was really, really hard, just gave me confidence to, that I can do hard things and I can, I can do hard things in the future and keep trying. And even if I fail, it doesn't mean it's over. 
Um, so just that helped me, I guess, kind of like take on um, hard projects again and again, and then build up to bigger and bigger things. So definitely recommend something like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. So we do have a few more submitted questions that we want to try and get to. The first one is, what are the first steps you can take to begin research, especially if you don't know how to start or what to study? Mm -hmm. um, so this is why the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program is so awesome, because they kind of do a lot of work for you. <laughs> they have, um, they already work with professors and students who are interested in research, and there are already projects that are ongoing that professors are doing that as a freshman, you can just sign up to help out on. Like you don't have to necessarily come up with your own organic um, research idea right off the bat, which is really hard to do. <laughs> to think of a new idea is very challenging. Um, but but yeah, so that's something, be, becoming involved in the Office of Under, the Office of National Fellowships to some degree, but then also the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program. Um, and there's a few other um, opportunities, but if you follow those people on social media and keep up to date with them, you'll be aware of the of the opportunities. Um, but yeah, you don't need to come into FSU with this like whole basis of what you want to do for research. Um, there are people there to help you out with that. And then along the journey, eventually you get to the point of hopefully developing your own research interests and ideas and coming up with an original project. But um, at the beginning, it's just about learning how research even works um, and and what kind of things are out there and sparking your interest. But a way, so if there is something that you're like slightly interested in though, um, just read up on that topic. Like when I was earlier in my freshman and sophomore year, I was really interested in human trafficking work or anti-human trafficking advocacy. And I just did, I was in, there's a club at FSU that focused on that, but we just, I learned so much. I just, I read books, I went to seminars, I did all of this stuff um, that just, I became aware of the complexities and all the issues. And then part of that, I applied to some of the research I did in the research intensive bachelor's certificate later. It wasn't directly linked, but I already had this basis of knowledge um, that I could bounce off of. So just, if you're, if something's interesting to you, just start reading about it. Um, and then eventually it'll maybe develop into something bigger. Awesome. Um, and then the next question is, can you, Please explain more of what global engagement is. Um, yeah, the Center for Global Engagement. Um, there's a there's a bunch of different centers at FSU is what they call them. There's like the Center for Leadership and Social Change, which is another really cool center um, to be involved with. <laughs> um, the Center for Global Engagement is basically this building facility at FSU that is all things global. Um, it's kind of like a home base for a lot of international students. Um, there's a lot of advisors there who help international students with their visas and stuff like that. But there's also like at, once a week they would do international coffee hour and all, all the international students would come to international coffee hour and students who are from US would come to international coffee hour and you just have conversations. Um, and it's, there's not really, there's barely any structure. It's just an opportunity to engage, engage across cultures, um, which is really interesting. So it's just kind of a center that puts on a lot of events like that. Um, that that facilitates cross-cultural communication um, and sometimes they have I did take one class that was taught in the globe too by a professor who was she was a professor but she also had a position like at the globe um, so it's just they're probably on social media too and you can go follow them but they're just they're kind of like a home-based center that just facilitates a lot of intercultural dialogue at FSU um, and puts on all kinds of events they're just really interesting they also um, offer the Global Citizenship Certificate, yeah. so that's a cool way to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, so how was your transition from law school to practice, and how about law school debt? Is that a burden for you? Um, so I made my law school decision very um, financially conscious, and a lot of the reason, I mean, I love FSU a lot, but a lot of the reason why I came to FSU was because they offered me a package that was much more reasonable than a lot of other schools were offering me. So that made it much more manageable. Um, I got into hiring schools, but at the end of the day, it just didn't make sense for me to, to go there, especially given that coming out of law school, I wanted, I wasn't set on making a ton of money and I didn't want to be constrained by, by taking a job that I might not have wanted just to pay back law school debt. So 
FSU was the right choice for me for a lot of different reasons, but financially was definitely one of them. Um, I did get a few scholarships too. So like reaching out to, there's like private donors and stuff like that um, to help with that. But um, yeah, sorry, could you repeat the other half of that question too? I got wrapped up in the financial part. <laughs> um, give me one second. Mm -hmm. um, it was, how was your transition from law school to practice? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was pretty exciting. Um, the bar exam is right in between there. Um, but I, so I, the job that I have now, I knew that I was going to have it um, in October of my last year of law school. So I was very fortunate to be able to, I was graduating and knew that I was going to be employed um, the coming year, which is very nice um, and comforting to know. Um, but it, I mean, it was really, I, so right now I, I don't have, I'm not in private practice. Um, I work at the Florida Supreme Court. So it's, a it's like, I work for the government. I have a government job and I don't have clients that I work for. Um, I mostly just do a lot of research and writing all day long. I'm looking up cases and analyzing cases and then summarizing them and giving my own opinion on them. Um, so it was, it's actually really similar to law school a lot more than other jobs that my friends have. Like if you come out and you're working in private practice, you're, you have clients that you're responding to and you're working for their interests. Um, and a lot of times there's like a monetary goal um, connected to those interests. So it's a lot harder to have time to sit back and just think about the law, which is a luxury that I have a lot because that's my whole job is just to read something and then think about it um, and then write a recommendation based off of that, based off of the research that I do for it. So, and, and what I'm doing now is called a clerkship. It's a judicial clerkship. Um, and that's a job that um, people try to get. Typically it's a, your first job out of law school before you go on to another job um, because it gives you a, a really good background. Working at a court, you're kind of on the other side of how things work. Instead of the people coming to the court and arguing with them, you're the people getting to make the decisions on the back end. So it's a really good background to have and a lot of law firms look really favorably um, on it because you have that background knowledge of like the inner workings of the court and the decision making process. Um, but overall it wasn't that, it's not that different from law school because I'm reading and writing all the time. Um, <laughs> that is what a lot of law is. But um, yeah, so it's pretty smooth transition. I guess. The bar exam is in between there though. It's not very smooth. but. But, um, but yeah, and I, I also went straight from undergrad to law school. Um, so that was, some of my friends took like a year um, and did something else. And then there's a lot of people in law school who are on, it's like their second career kind of, they're coming back around um, and they've already been like an engineer or a teacher um, and they decided to go to law school. And those, those people were always really interesting to talk to because they had this whole new perspective of what hard work means because they've actually been out like in the world doing really good work already. So um, that was really interesting. But yeah, yeah, it, it didn't awesome. do any of it. I'm glad that your transition has been smooth um, from law school to practice now. Um, going more off of that, how did you choose your focus in law school? And was there a specific class or situation that sparked your interest or was it just a gradual decision? Um, it was gradual and it changed all the time because um, every class I took, I was like, oh, now this is the most interesting thing I've learned. Um, <laughs> but I, so for a while I had kind of an international law focus um, coming with an international affairs major. I took um, comparative constitutional law and just classes um, that were like global law um, in general. Um, and I thought that was really interesting, but then I became involved with the Public Interest Law Center, which is a, a clinic that's at the law school that does pro bono work for mostly for children who are either in the foster care system or have criminal records of their own and criminal um, cases that they're trying to deal with. Um, but it, with so there's the Public Interest Law Center and then within that there's the Children's Advocacy Clinic the Veterans Legal Clinic, and then we have an immigration clinic. And, and now we have um, a gender-based violence clinic too, I think. Um, so all of those are little subsets of, of cases that they work on. Um, so I became involved mostly in the Children's Advocacy Clinic and then got just from, I got to work on real cases, um, which is really fun. And then the professor who I worked under was just like a fascinating guy to talk to. So that kind of moved me more into being interested in criminal law um, and juvenile law. Um, so, and that's kind of where I ended when I graduated, but 
every, every semester you can take a new class and be like, oh, this is so fascinating now. This is the coolest thing I'm doing. So it changes all the time. But, um, but just like an undergrad, like the, the being, having a good professor and connecting with that professor can take you a really long way in undergrad and in law school. So go to office hours. <laughs> I highly recommend. That's awesome. Okay, so we just have a few minutes left, so hopefully we can get a couple more in. Um, so what experience do you think would be most beneficial for underclassmen? I guess in general, this person is asking, like any type of experience? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if I was going to do one extracurricular, it would definitely be something research-based, if you were just going to have to pick one. Um, yeah, and I, but yeah, so something research based that's going to teach you how to think critically, but also something that's going to give you, um, if you're, if you're going to do another thing, something's going to give you a good supportive friend group or something that will make your resume seem really unique, like the circus or, or some really specific student group. So something like that. Awesome. And then um, this is a little bit of a two part, but what do you think about international programs related to your profession? And where did you find your motivation, I guess, to be so involved and to pursue a law degree? Um, so I did, like I studied abroad for the, the international program. Um, that was, it was political science based. So it wasn't totally law based, but it, you know, it, like it mixes. Um, there are a few international programs that the law school has too and that I did have a few friends who studied abroad a semester in law school which seems I never did that but that seems really cool um but yeah I mean there's all kinds of opportunities out and even in undergrad there are internships you can do like one of the things I almost did for social science scholars was go work at a court in Ireland um and that didn't totally pan out but as an undergrad you could you can do that too so there's all kinds you can totally blend the international legal interests like you can blend all of your interests into one like wham bam amazing summer experience so just like do the do the research to do that if you want to um but yeah sorry what was the first part of that question again um it was how did you find your motivation yeah um i don't know i was just i think the key is making sure that you do things that are interesting to you because if something isn't interesting to you you're not going to have the same kind of energy for it um and i just came to FSU and saw it as some place where there were, there's just always interesting things happening everywhere. So it's like, you can't get involved in enough. It's like impossible at FSU. So um, as long as it, it, I don't know, it wasn't really hard for me because I was always making sure that I was surrounding myself with people that I really liked talking to and things that were really interesting to me. And then the energy just comes because you wanna, you don't wanna miss out. So, but then you have to be careful and make sure you're not overworking yourself. But, but yeah, just use your time wisely. Definitely. Okay, so this is the last question. Um, it's two part as well, so I'll just ask you the first part first. Um, how would you go about reaching out to scholars at different institutions who are pioneering new areas of research that are interesting to you? Mm -hmm. Um, so this might be different for different fields, but I actually did have this problem when I was doing the research intensive bachelor's certificate because I needed a really specific data set and this one professor um, I think she was at Yale or something like that had it and I was just like oh this lady's never gonna talk to me and I just sent her an email and within 24 hours she responded with um, with her entire data set because I think it's really easy to undervalue how cool you are as an undergrad who's interested in a research topic like don't undersell yourself just because you think like oh I'm not in grad school or I'm not like doing like really really good research like you're, the fact that you're interested in something is so exciting to professors and to so many people. Um, so don't, I don't know, don't undervalue that. Just reach out, just like send an email and be polite and um, you'll probably get a good response back. But also a lot of times, like the professors that I had also had connections with the professors that I wanted to talk to. So reaching out to your own professors and getting kind of maybe an introduction um, or something like that would be useful too. That's true. And I think as an undergrad, you don't realize that professors love talking about themselves mm -hmm. and the research that they do. It's something they worked really hard on. So that's mm -hmm. definitely very true. Um, so then finally, what resources at FSU um, were available to you to help incorporate this kind of research through your own independent research as an undergraduate student? Mm -hmm. Let me know if you need me to like rephrase it. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, so um, Europe definitely 
and I mean, they just have, they, they're so broad in what they can offer you um, for it. Like any major can become involved in Europe. Um, so I definitely start there. Um, I really enjoyed the research intensive bachelor's certificate, but that's something that's only offered in the political science department, um, or at least right now. Um, but also one of the things that's unique about research is you can really just make it your own. So if you start with your op or, or with RIVC or whatever, and just get paired with a professor and you just make a good connection with that professor and keep talking to them, um, semester by semester, that project can develop into whatever you want it to develop into if you show more interest. Um, so you don't, you can, you can use these programs as like a baseline, um, and then like run with it. And if you're interested in something, just keep putting the energy into it and keep reaching out to people and they'll, they'll probably be excited that you're reaching out to them. Um, so, so yeah, just take it and run with it. <laughs> thank you so much, Rima. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. I mean, that was great content. It made me really think what did I do when I was an undergrad student? Because I did not do that much, um, but it's awesome. And thank you, Ashley, for moderating. Um, for all of you, I am going to put some links into the chat that I'm gonna be referencing here so that you have them. Um, but thank you again to both of you. We greatly appreciate you sharing your experience and knowledge with us. And if we didn't get to anybody's question today, I think we ended up getting to everybody's question. But if for some reason we did not and anybody has any additional, please feel free to email me. Um, I just put my email address in the chat and I can follow up with you. Also, if you logged on late or you want to rewatch to catch an answer, this recording will be posted on our Friends of HSF Facebook and YouTube starting tomorrow. So those links to our Facebook and YouTube are in the chat as well. And I really liked Rima's advice on following people on social media um, because right now everybody is trying, just like we are right here in this virtual format, trying to figure out how to do successful programming virtually. So make sure if this was something interesting to you, um, we have plenty more scheduled through the fall up through November 12th with different topics. Um, so just make sure that you're following our social media um, so that you know what's coming. And I also recognize that a lot of you are new and incoming students to FSU, so welcome. And if you want to learn more about what we offer in the Honor Scholars and Fellows House, you can visit the website that I've also entered into the chat, and it'll elaborate on the three undergraduate programs and offices in HSF and what we offer. Um, as Rima said and talked about a lot, we, the Center for Undergraduate Research and Academic Engagement has a lot of undergraduate research opportunities. Um, in the Office of National Fellowships, if you're interested in applying for a fellowship, that's who you'll work with. And we also have the Honors Program in HSF, which you can get involved in with doing an Honors in the Major thesis or laterally admitting into the Honors Program. So I definitely encourage all of you to go to that website and see more of what we offer you all. And lastly, like I said, be sure to check our social media. Our next speaker is going to be September 2nd at 2 p.m., and she'll be discussing careers in STEM, navigating STEM as a female, and ways that you can maximize your undergraduate research. So huge thank you again to Rima and to Ashley, and thank you all so much for joining us today. We hope to see you in the future, whether virtually or in person. Stay safe. Cool. Thank Bye. You. No, thank you all. Everyone.